Let's go. This is Peter Cole with an update of 1234YF. All yours. Is this on? Okay, thanks, G. Um, first of all, hope everybody had a great lunch. Uh, thanks to Doreen, because we know Doreen is the real power behind this. Big hand for Doreen. If you don't know this, I refer hey, to you G giving... as, as, as the Count. If you've ever seen Sesame Street, right? Resemblance of the Count. <laughs> yeah, that's right. OK, so um, I did not prepare a presentation and kind of did that intentionally. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am chairman of the SAE Interior Climate Control Service Committee. What's that mean to you? It means I'm responsible for all the equipment that you use to service air conditioning. And I've been working on 1234YF now for 11 years, believe it or not. As I showed a few people here, my license plate is R-1234YF. People ask me why that is. It's because 1234YF is going to buy me a Ferrari someday. <laughs> OK? And I want it to represent properly. So I'm going to give you a little bit of information, then I'll take a couple questions if you guys have questions. First of all, 1234YF is coming. It is in almost all of the Chrysler products and began going into Chrysler products in 2013. It first here in the US went into the Cadillac XTS in 2012. It is now in every European car sold in Europe. New car sold in Europe with one exception and that is a $5,000 option on two high-end Mercedes that have CO2 as the refrigerant. That's crazy. Yep, that's crazy. So by the end of 2017, there will be 50 million cars on the road with 1234YF. What's that include? That now includes the Ford Fusion, the F-150, the Honda Civic, the Toyota Tundra, um, Chevy Malibu, and the, the list goes on. There's only two car companies that are not currently using domestically here in the US 1234YF in, one, in any of their vehicles. That's Mazda and Nissan slash Infiniti. There, see, we got some applause. They're the only two that are not currently using 1234YF, although that will change in 2018 for both companies. By the end of 2018, approximately 90% of the cars sold here in the US, when you buy it off the dealer lot, will have 1234YF in it. I neglected to bring my, uh, my little magazine ad, but you, you may or may not have seen it. Honeywell started advertising in March. 12 ounce cans of 1234YF, right? Everybody's excited about that, right? <laughs> Available at Wally World. Actually, just a, a side note on Wally World. If you haven't seen this, look it up when you get home. Wally World now has, I believe, an exclusive on what's called Mobile One Annual Protection. 20,000 mile synthetic motor oil, OK? How well do you think that's going to go over? I wonder if they sell a 20,000 mile filter to go with that. <laughs> All right. So I, I want to go over a couple of the common questions that I get when I talk about 1234YF. Anybody heard that it's flammable? Anybody concerned that it's flammable? A few? OK, what if I told you that it is less flammable than gasoline? Would you be impressed? No. If I told you it's less flammable than diesel fuel, would that impress you? How about less flammable than motor oil? Transmission fluid? Power steering fluid? How about less flammable than antifreeze? How about less flammable than windshield washer fluid? Are you still concerned? No. All right? So YF is slightly flammable. Why is it slightly flammable? Well, because kind of without the whole long, drawn-out story, the Europeans decided that they want to be really green. 
and somebody decided that 134A was contributing to global warming. Just like we transitioned from R12 to 134A because of ozone depletion, whether they're real or not real is not a matter of discussion here. They decided that you could no longer use 134A effective January 1st, 2017, in a new vehicle. So all vehicles sold in Europe can't have 134A. So as I said, I've been working on this for 11 years, since 2006. So we did a whole bunch of work, and we came up with 1234YF. 1234YF is ridiculously expensive. Anybody know how much 1234YF is? At Walmart. That's a great question. How much do you think that 12-ounce can is going to go for? Thousand bucks. Tom, I, you know what? <laughs> From your mouth to Honeywell's ears. <laughs> There's right? a translation problem. <laughs> <laughs> right. What if I told you that while I don't know what the price is, and I really should have called Travis before I came and asked him what the price was going to be, maybe he'd tell me, maybe you wouldn't. I can tell you that it's expected to be over $100 for a 12-ounce can. Okay? I'd tell you what I pay for it, but it really doesn't matter what I pay for it. Let's say that I pay over $60 a pound for it, and I buy it in 110-pound cylinders. It's like liquid gold. It's locked up in our office. So YF will be extremely expensive. So the concern we have and the concern the industry has is who's going to be the first guy that puts a can of 134A, and I don't want to pick on anybody any particular vendor in the room, except for maybe Tom. I already tried it on a rental car, just so you know. You did? Okay. <laughs> so when your local auto parts store, um, let's pick on Advance, because they were mentioned in the Honeywell ad. When your local auto parts store has a can of 1234YF, a 12-ounce can of 1234YF, which, by the way, before you ask, is likely going to have sealant in it at some point in time, yes, uh, is 100 bucks. And what's a 12-ounce can of 134A? Round numbers, 10 bucks, right? Just round numbers, right? And are they going to sell an adapter kit beside that can of 134A for $19? Yep. Is it legal to sell that? Absolutely. Absolutely legal to sell it. Is it legal to use it? Absolutely not. <laughs> but they didn't tell you to do it. They didn't package them together. They were just on the shelf side by side. Right? So that is a concern. So let's talk about servicing for just a moment. What's different about servicing a 1234YF system than servicing a 134A system? Anybody? Okay, that's good. That, that's good. That's good. But that's kind of like, you know, that was like a freebie, right? <laughs> Nothing. Yes, sir. Hold on. Say that again. System pressures. System pressures are identical to 134A. Virtually identical. Maximum 8 PSI difference on the high side. You ever going to notice 8 PSI difference on your gauge set on the high side? Nope. Never. Capacity. Somebody else said capacity. What if I said, nope, not capacity either? Because we're about to have systems with eight ounces of refrigerant in them, in the air conditioning system. What about the oil? That's another great question. Yes, the oil is different, but the ND12 oil is theoretically backwards compatible with 134A. A little different formula because of an acid issue they had, no big deal. There is nothing different about servicing a YF system than servicing a 134A system, with one exception. The $8,000 you're about to pull out of your pocket for new equipment. Right? So, you know, I, I mean, I didn't come here to give you good news. I just came here to give you news. Right? You can call it alternative news. You can call it fake news. You can call it whatever you want. But it's news. See? G, G, G wants to say something about Trump right now, doesn't he? <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm interested in what questions you might have. Is there something on your mind? Yes, sir. This is something on cleavage 
Great question. Yes. One of the things that I, 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 I will, I promise, I promise. One of the things that is really good about 1234YF is it has a very low global warming potential, if you believe in that. <coughs> um, 1234YF will deplete itself in 11 days. And that was the question. Will it deplete itself in 11 days in the atmosphere? Yes, depletes itself in 11 days in the atmosphere. Because it depletes itself in, in 11 days, it's slightly unstable. Any substance that is slightly unstable is also slightly flammable. So something like propane that might deplete itself in two hours is much more flammable than YF, which takes 11 days, which is much more flammable than 134A, which takes like a year. Sir? That's a great question, leak detectors. OK, so let's talk about three different things, three different topics there. What's that? Oh, no. I don't sell leak detectors, my friend. So machines, see Chuck's waving at me in the back of the room. The, the SAE standards, the three important SAE standards are SAE, or four important standards, we'll call them, are SAE J2843. That is the standard that's required to, to have a machine for servicing 1234YF. In case you don't know, SAEJ2788 is the current standard for 134A service. As an alternative, if you have a machine that's certified for YF to the 2843 standard as well as the 2788 standard, and yes, there is a dual machine available, and you can see Chuck Abbott if you have any questions about a dual machine, because CPS offers one. Um, that is the J3030 standard. So 2843 is the key. J2913 is the standard for 1234YF certified leak detectors. One of the differences in servicing, although I said it was identical or virtually identical, is there's a, a uh, part of the servicing process in the machine that asks you to put a 2913 certified leak detector on the passenger floor of the vehicle after they've charged 15% of the refrigerant in there, looking for leaks in the evaporator. Now, the only reason we have that part of the standard in there is because Chrysler still hasn't figured out how to make an evaporator that doesn't leak. <laughs> okay? <laughs> if it weren't for them, we wouldn't have that problem. Um, so yes, a 2913 leak detector is required. There are many out there. 2913 leak detectors are also certified for 134A. So you don't need a separate one. You can buy a 2913, now you're certified for both. Anybody else? Yes, sir? <laughs> That's a great question. I don't know, Chuck, is there a reason the machine takes so much longer? I can't hear you, Chuck. Yeah, that could be it, yeah. Okay, so here's the differences in the machine. The machine now requires either an identifier to be built into the machine or connection of an external identifier via USB port to the machine before the machine will go into recovery mode. They are concerned with the large price difference between the refrigerants that some people may consider 1234YF to be factory fill only. And if you have factory fill only, that uh, they're concerned. So we have time for like one or two more questions. Technician certification. Technician certification has changed slightly. If you have a section 609 certification today, you are grandfathered for the future. I'm not a fan of technician 609 certification. Let me tell you why. Because any 11 year old with an access to their their parents' credit card can pass that test, right? Doesn't mean you know how to fix a car. It just means you know that you were able to read the book. SAEJ 2845 is the new standard for technician certification. There is a little bit more in it than, than there used to be. So if you don't have certification, you're gonna have to take the new test. If you have certification, you don't have to take it again. There was, yes sir.
What does it deplete? <coughs> no, it, it dissipates in the atmosphere in 12 days, or 11 days. Like, what is it, does it turn into something else? Um, that's a great question. I don't know the answer. If I did, I'd tell you. <laughs> Sir? Wow. Wow. Took us 18 minutes to get to that question. I am shocked. So, so the question was, what happens if somebody puts 134A into a 1234YF system? Let's start with, I still have my SAE hat on, right? Let's start with that's illegal, OK? Um, according to President Trump, it is illegal. Used to be according to President Obama, but seen as Obama is not president anymore, it's now illegal according to President Trump. So, I, okay, uh, okay, because because this is where it kind of gets gets ugly, which is which is why we're shortly going to introduce Wayne to <laughs> to the program. But no, it, just listen to me for just a moment, okay? 1234YF and 134A are generally compatible with each other. There are some slight differences. I'd be concerned about some compressor issues over time by putting 134A into a 1234YF system. However, we fully expect it's going to happen. And that's why they required refrigerant identification first. Not only because of that, but it only takes 3% propane in a 1234YF system to make the refrigerant mixture beyond the acceptable flammability limit. It took a lot more propane in a 134A system to go beyond the limit. Okay, last question. Uh, to ask you if this is fact, but uh, we were taught or told that if you put 134 in a 1234YF, the seals in the expansion valve would leak and then you'd have a problem. I'm not aware of that. Okay. I'm not aware of that. So there was an incompatibility with, yep. the, with the oil or something. Called we, it, it, the question was, just so yeah, G doesn't yell at me, is uh, <laughs> that uh, that they were told that there was a seal compatibility issue between 134A and 1234YF. There may well be a seal compatibility issue on a 134A system if you put YF in it. We are not aware of a seal compatibility issue in a 1234YF system if you put 134A in it. And uh, while I'm not going to entertain the question, I heard the question. The question was, who's enforcing that rule, those rules, and the answer is I have not seen the little blue EPA police around lately. However, that doesn't mean they're not there, and uh, you know, you do, do it at your own risk, but the next guy, if he's servicing properly, has a machine that either has a built-in identifier or won't recover until it has an identifier, and the last thing you want to do is have a customer complain to you they want to charge me $1,400 to fix my system because they say it has the wrong refrigerant and you were the last one to touch it. Okay? G? Thank you, Peter. Let's give him a round of applause. That's some good info, right? Real good info. So thank you once again, Peter, and thanks for the donations and all.